When you take a solo, do you ever feel like you're never quite sure when to begin or end a phrase? Do you sometimes feel like that person at the party who says the most awkward thing at a weird moment? Or the person who just can't stop talking? Or the wallflower in the corner who just doesn't know what to say? Phrasing is so important in music. And there is a lot of advice out there on the internet. A lot of it is stuff like, well, put a period at the end of a sentence. It's like using a comma or a semicolon. I mean, who even knows how to use a semicolon anymore? I'm gonna give you very specific advice on how you can improve your phrasing. The two methods are one, a rhythmic target, and two, a harmonic target. Strategy number one is simply to use a rhythmic target. We have to know in advance what the chords and the structure of the song or the jam track is before we take our solo. If we don't know the number of measures of each chord, it's very hard to do really good phrasing. Let's say that we're working with a 12 bar form. 12 bar form is incredibly common in blues and rock and roll and folk and country. It's in so many genres. And what is that form? Starts with, in its simplest form, it starts with four bars of the one chord. Those four measures are going to sound like a kind of sentence with a period at the end. And those segments are the perfect way to structure your phrases. Now, four bars is pretty long, actually. That would be a pretty long phrase. And if we're just starting out our solo, we might not want such a long phrase right at the beginning. It depends on the song, but generally speaking, with a solo, your phrases are gonna start shorter at the beginning and get longer as you go along. Because when we start shorter, that means that it's less intense, and as our phrases get longer, it sounds more intense. So let's break up those first four measures. We're gonna break them into two. Music is surprisingly mathematical, right? We actually find it very satisfying when musical things happen in groups of two or four or eight or 12 or 16. You've probably noticed that. So we're taking those four bars and we're gonna play two short little phrases. The track we're gonna use is an A, so I'm gonna start out with just A minor pentatonic. And by the way, all these loops are available on the Patreon, right? There's one. Right? So now we've taken four bars and we've turned it into two phrases. This tempo is pretty quick, so the space in between of those phrases does not need to be long. You will notice I was ending on the roots there. That does help. But we're going to talk about that later. So what happens next in the 12 bar form? We go to the four chord. We got to know that, right? And the 12 bar form is so common, we should have that memorized. So if you haven't got that memorized after this video, maybe have a look at it. So we're going to have two phrases over the first four bars, and then we'll place another phrase over the next two bars because we know that the four chord in a 12 bar is another two bars. So easy, two bars, two bars, two bars. One of the things you might have noticed in that last one is that the first two phrases I played, I started the same way. That's another nice trick to make these phrases seem like they're part of the same story. So now from memory, what do we know about the 12 bar? It goes back to the one chord, in this case A, for another two bars. Ah, beautiful, there's another two bars. We've got two bars, two bars, two bars, two bars. So mathematical. Now we're not always gonna make it so mathematical, but when you're learning good phrasing, we're gonna use these rhythmic targets to get used to it. So let's try the first eight bars of the whole form. We 
notice that in this case, I kept going with the first two phrases starting in the same way. They were very similar, but different. When the four chord comes in bar five, I felt like, okay, now I need something very different. Also, because it's a chord change there, right? And then we go back to the one, and I just played something simple that felt right. Now, for the last section of the 12 bar, we have a very interesting thing that happens. We have the five chord for only one measure, and we have the four chord for only one measure. We could take those as two separate phrases, maybe. But at this faster tempo, we don't really have much space to add any periods or commas or semicolons. So we're gonna take those two chords and make those a phrase. And guess what? We got two measures again, right? We have in this key, it'll be E to D, that's five to four. So I'm still just gonna stick with A minor pentatonic. Later, we're gonna look at how we can do some harmonic targets and change that up. But for now, A minor pentatonic, two measure phrase, two measure phrase, two measure phrase, two measure phrase, two measure phrase. And you can probably guess what's gonna happen in the last two measures again as well, right? <laughs> So I did the whole 12 bar, I couldn't help myself. We already knew it was gonna be another two bars at the end. And you might say, well, that's so simple. But if you listen to so many famous songs, especially songs that are based on the 12 bar, you will hear the same thing. Now we can force ourselves sometimes to solo or phrase over some of those changes. And that does get more interesting. But if you're still just trying to improve your phrasing right now, Go with this two bars concept for a bit, and then you can start to run some of your phrases over those sections. On my website, I'm gonna have a few of these licks in tablature form for you for free, and on our Patreon, we're gonna have lots more plus practice tips videos that will help you with your phrasing over 12 bar and other forms, plus this loop so you can practice all these ideas. I've also got my book available called Guitar Soloing Like a Pro. It's available on Amazon. So here's my second method for improving your phrasing, and this is what I call harmony targets. Now, it's actually a very similar concept because we have to listen for the chord changes. But in this case, we're gonna use the chord changes to inform what we're playing. So previously, we were thinking about the 12 bar and we were thinking only about when the chords change. But now we're gonna think about what the chords change to and we're gonna use the harmony of those chords to land certain notes that make our phrases sound even better. So in its simplest form, this kind of harmony target might be just hitting the root of the next chord as it happens. So we know we're in A, the first chord is A, the four chord, the next chord is D. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start that lick on a D note. So we still have our first two licks are the same, but now when the D happens, we're gonna start on a D note or that one, right? We gotta know where a D note is now, hmm. Or you can use the quick, easy method of finding a four chord. If this is a one chord, then this is a four chord. So let's hear what that sounds like. It's still all A minor pentatonic, and then we'll fancy it up later. It's actually a very easy lick, and this lick is in lots of stuff, especially old country music. But it doesn't, it's not necessarily country. That's pretty cool. That's all in A minor pentatonic, but I'm actually going D, D. And that note is the minor seven of D, but nah, it doesn't matter. And then you'll notice on the five chord, I did the same because we know that whenever we're on a four chord, a five chord is just two steps up, and so then we can actually just do the same. That's 
five chord, four chord. So now my phrases are being informed by the lengths of the chords and when they change, but also what's in the chords. So let's take this harmony targeting concept to a whole nother level. Remember that this 12 bar is actually in a major key. So why are we playing minor pentatonic? I mean, we can, because that's the blues and that's the rock and roll. But it means that we can also play A major pentatonic. An A major pentatonic will sound even more connected with the A chord. Then it allows us to do cool things on the four chord harmonically. A major pentatonic we know from our first finger pinky rule works like this. That's A. So all I have to do instead of my first finger being on it, I put my pinky on it. And I still play my easy shape. It's so fantastic how easy that is. I get a different set of notes and a different sound and it works over A major. So here's the trick. We're gonna play A major pentatonic over the A chord and then we're gonna play A minor pentatonic over the D chord. Now our phrases are gonna target those chords not just rhythmically but also harmonically. have a lot of different cool sounds. Once you start getting a handle on the structure of the song and being able to solo in a way that is informed by that structure, then you also want to start breaking that rule. So let's practice making bars five, six, seven, eight, one long phrase. Remember that's the D chord back to the A chord. But start with our first four bars of A. simple concepts but very related. Remember, you've got to know the structure of the jam track or the song that you're playing on in order to make the phrasing sound like it belongs in the song. If you're struggling with this concept, don't worry. All these things that I teach in my videos, like this one here, require time to digest and time to practice. And playing these things is fun, so we got to look at it like that anyway. What's the hurry? Enjoy the process. My name is Blue Morris and I teach guitar lessons here in Vancouver, Canada, and I'll see you next week.